So today what we're talking about is scale drawings. And the first problem we're going to try is 4-11. And for 4-11, this is an estimating thing. There's a, actually, you don't even have to find an actual answer. I just need you to think about how you think you would do this one. So looking at 4-11, it says, OK, I'm going to do my best with the name. Suppose Eulalia uses a map of Pennsylvania to determine that Valley Forge is 14 miles from downtown Philadelphia. Did she really measure 14 miles? Explain how she determined that distance. So how do you think someone estimates without using MapQuest? Without using an app in their phone? Chat, chat to me, how do you think she figured out how far using a map? how she figured out the Pennsylvania, a map of Pennsylvania that Valley Forge is 14 miles from Philadelphia. So how did she figure that out? Map key, scale, yes, so you guys all get it. So it would be, how would the map key help her? So give me an example of something you might see on a map key, and you probably did this in social studies in the past too. So give me an example of something that would be shown on a map key. Like how would it show miles on a map key. Type in what you think. Anybody have an idea? Okay, it would be scale, but what would you see on a map key? So what would the key say? Good, I see somebody put one inch equals one mile. What's another example you could see on a map key? Mm -hmm. So think about what Daniel just said. He said one inch equals one mile. Give me another example of something that could be on a map key besides one inch equaling one mile. One mile is like one centimeter equals one foot. Good example, but probably I was even thinking of usually it'll be like one inch equals 10 miles. Usually they'll do. And because if you have a whole map of Pennsylvania, you're going to have to obviously scale everything down. So when you're scaling things, you're having um, a copy of what it is just scaled down. If you think back to the dragon we did, okay, that's obviously scale, that's scale factor. So it has to be scaled correct. So yes, one mile is about that long. Exactly, Vivi. So it would be scaled down. And the map key tells you basically what the ratio is. So when you're thinking, um, scale and map keys, you're thinking ratios. Okay, that's fine, okay. So you're thinking ratios or you're thinking of scaling. So that's basically all that that first problem was asking you. So let me look at the second one. So we have, oh, all these fun names. Hold on, I gotta get rid of my chat box. Oh my goodness. Never goes away, hold on. My chat is in the way sort of stays in the center all the time. Okay, so we have Galermo. I love these names. Galermo, sure. Galermo needs a scale drawing of his house placed on the, its suburban lot. So the lot is 56 feet wide and 100 feet deep. So when you're thinking wide, obviously across here, so it's 56 feet wide and it's 100 feet deep. So the depth is how far it goes back from the streets to here. So that's the information they give us. So knowing that, he has a sketch of the house here. So this is the sketch. So you see it's 30 feet from um, the two sides of his house. It's eight feet um, uh, right here from the side of his yard to the side of his house. We're assuming that it's about eight feet here also. The garage here is 15 feet. And then 17 feet from the garage to the main house, 38 feet here. So those are the measurements they give you. Now you're not gonna do the graph paper one. And again, the graph paper one, there's a similar one on your homework I crossed out because again, unless you wanna draw a grid scale drawing, you can. But if you don't have graph paper or ruler at home, it's sort of difficult to do that. But what we're going to do is not worry about drawing the graph um, right now, but that would be an option that would be helpful. But what we're going to do is B. For B, it says Guillermo wants to put a rectangular swimming pool in his backyard. What is the largest pool you would advise him to have installed? So there is a lot going on here. We can't just guess. 
we got to think about the largest width and the largest depth of the swimming pool as far as how deep in the lot. So how wide and then how deep it'll go in the lot. lot. So think about what we know and what we could figure out from this. I want you to focus on this. This problem has, uh, it's a multi-step problem. So for this one, the first thing we have to look at is this. So it tells us that the lot is 56 feet wide and 100 feet deep. So let's worry about the depth first. So from here to here, this is 100 feet. Okay, so from here to here. So what do we know about the other measurements that will help us figure out what we have left? What do we know about the depth of different parts of this? We know the total depth of the lot is 100 feet. And we also want to think about this. This is important too. We know that the garage is 20 feet from the street. So let me give you a little help here. This is 20 feet here. From here to here is 20 feet. So what can I do with the numbers I know about the depth to be able to figure out how much room is left for the swimming pool in the backyard? Type in what, when you figure it out. What can I subtract? What can I add to figure out what I know and then figure out what's left? So think about this. I want to figure out what's left back here. This is the, my focus is right this area where the pool will go. I want to figure out how much room is there until the yard ends. What can I do to figure that out? Anybody have an idea? What's my first step to solve this problem? Chat away when you're ready. What can you put in your calculator or do on your paper? Add all up, subtract 100 from the total. Okay, Tommy, I agree, but I want more specifics. What are you going to add up? What are you adding up? We're going to add 38. So he's saying they add this plus the 17 plus the 20. Yes. So add those all up. What do you get when you add those all up? 75. Good. So after I add them all up, what's the second step that Tommy said? What do we do after we add those all up? It's okay, Vivi. Do your best. It'll be on video if you can't see it now. Subtract from 100. So 100 minus, no, don't subtract 100. Do 100 minus 25. Ooh, see a lot of zeros there. 25. So it'd be 25 feet. Now, you got to be careful here because think about if your parents were to put your pool in your backyard. You can't have the edges of the pool be too close. So we don't want, so back here, we don't want it to be too close to these edges here because we don't want it touching the house and we don't want it on the property line. So we're going to round that down and we're gonna make that 20 feet. So we're gonna say the, the depth of it is going to be 20 feet because we wanna leave a couple feet on the uh, edges. And now let's deal with the width of it. So now I'm gonna erase all these depth ones. Those are all gone. Now we're gonna worry about the width. So the width of this was 56 feet wide. So from here, so from here to here, it's 56 feet. So we got to figure out how wide our pool can be. We got to see what we know. Look at the widths we know. Now that 15 feet isn't too important. We have this that we know, and we have this we know. And even though we don't know this here, we do know this. So what can we do to figure out the width? 
So we know it's 56, good. So 56 feet is the total width, so that's easy. But I don't, again, I don't want my pool to be touching this borderline and this borderline. I wanna have it so it ha there's some room on the side. So think about if you're installing something, you want it sort of to sit here without touching the house and without touching the backyard. So what would be a reasonable estimate for what it could be? So we don't want to do 56 feet because that might be touching the sides. Oh, we could go higher. You guys could go a little bit higher because the, for the depth, we know it could only be 20 feet deep because, again, the house, you know, the depth of it, that'll only be 20 feet. But for the width of it, let me reverse this. It's going to be wider than it is deep. So if the yard is 56 feet, I would say you're all okay. It's not like you're wrong in your measurements, but I would say the highest you'd want to go, what would the highest width you could have, do you think? If it's 56 feet, the whole yard, what would be a reasonable high level width? 50, I'd say 52 to 50. 60 is too much because the yard is only 56 feet wide. So you can't go 60 feet because that will be going in other people's yards. So I'd say the highest you'd probably want to go is about 50 feet by 20 feet. So it'd be 50 feet wide, 20 feet deep here. So that would be the, the depth and the width of it. So I'd say 50 would be a fair estimate for these. And this would be a little bit of estimating, but again, when you estimate, you gotta make sure you use the information you have. This sort of goes along with irregular figures and figuring out what you know and going from there. So that, that would be a good um, estimate for that one, okay? So that's how you can estimate. Now, because you got you have on your homework that's due next week, you have one drawing that you sort of have to estimate a little bit. So it's going to be similar to this. Let's look at this one now. Now, this one's a little bit different. This is in your book. This is 4-13. You have here, and my chat box keeps getting in my way. Let me shrink this and have it back up. You have the scale drawing here at the right shows the first floor of a house. The actual dimensions of the garage are 20 feet by 25 feet. So this garage here, they're telling you the dimensions of. So they're saying it's 20 feet by 25 feet. That's important information. So how many feet does each inch represent? And what is the scale? So if this is the information they gave us with the garage, that the garage is 20 by 25 feet. What would be the scale here? Basically, how many feet equal how many inches? Think about what they tell us. If I know that it's 20 by 25 for the garage and they tell us these measurements here, what would be, what would be the scale factor. So how many inches equal how many feet is what I'm looking for. And there's two ways to do this. Type in what you think. So if I had a little map key over here, if I put a little key down here, what can I say? What can I do to help people to know what, how the inches represent how many feet? So type in what you think. Anybody have an idea? Think about this, think about this, think about what numbers they go along with, think about what makes sense. Anybody want to take a guess? Oh, I see. 
Oh, see, that didn't pop up. Thank you guys. You guys got it. I was waiting and I didn't see it pop up. Chat didn't light up. So yeah, that's good. It would be one inch equals 20 feet. So when you're looking at this, you're looking at that the 20 feet goes along with the one inch. And you could write it either way. I'm just writing it this way. Which means that the 25 feet goes along with the one and a fourth inch. So you can write it either way. Obviously, having things to the nearest inch is easier to figure out and calculate things. So let's work through this problem now. So that's our scale here. Our scale is that for every inch on this little drawing, it equals 20 feet. So let's figure out the living room. So the living room. We want to figure out, we know this, that should be the easy part, but we also want to figure out this. So what do you think for here? The living room is set up as far as the width, it's two inches. How deep it is, the depth of it is one and a quarter inch. So what would that be then? What would be the, the scale or i should say the actual measurements of the living room so if it's two by one and one fourth because this is as deep as the garage what would be the actual measurements of that so you have your scale drawing so the actual measurements would be okay i see it i see it so good, so you would do just two times 20, that's easy, 40 feet. So it'd be 40 feet by, and then you'd have to do the one and one fourth times 25. So that would be one and one fourth times 25, which gives you, I should say the 25 feet, not one and one fourth times 25. So again, that's a sort of a right there answer because the one and one fourth goes along with it. So that's the length and width of the living room. We know that the scale of drawing sort of answered both of these. Now the last question, you've done things like this in the past, I know in some chapters, where they, they want to put carpeting in the living room. So use a calculator to figure out how much would it cost to carpet a room with this area. So this is a two-step problem. So this is D we're doing right now. So you have if you have a living room that has this area. How much would it cost if carpeting is $1.25 per square foot? So I think there's two steps you have to do with this. Step one, area. Step two, cost. So step one, you could tell me the area first and then tell me the cost second. So what would be the area of the room? Good, so it would be, the area would be 1,000 feet squared. So if you have a, an area of 1,000 feet squared or square feet, you just multiply that and you, this is just moving a decimal point. Um, you can multiply by $1.25, which would just be $1,250. So that's how much it would cost to carpet. Very expensive. That's expensive. But that's how much it would cost to carpet that living room. If you just have, if you find the area of it, you're just thinking about how much would it cover, uh, cost to cover that part of it. So those are sort of low level. The next one is going to take more work. This one is definitely the hardest of the bunch. So those were sort of more review. This one will be a little bit more difficult. Last one I want to do. We have Hank is planning, plant, planning, not planting, just planning his vegetable garden. He has created the scale drawing at right. The actual area for the tomatoes is 12 by 9 feet. So they're telling us the area of the Tomatoes is 12 feet by nine feet. So that's the information they tell us about the tomatoes. All the right angles are right angles. What scale did he use? So the first question is easy. Just tell me the scale factor. The second question is a lot more difficult. So let's do the easier one first. What would be the scale factor we could use here? Always try to go 
base it on one inch. So what would one inch equal for this drawing? So this one's not too difficult. What would one inch equal? Oh, I need labels, Vivi. You know I'm not gonna accept that. I don't know, are you talking about bunnies? Are you talking about, oh, that's better, okay. One inch equals six feet, good. So the scale here is one inch equals six feet. And if you don't see how they got that, basically what they did is they took the 12 feet and they knew that 12 feet equals two inches. So they just took half of 12, which is six. So one inch equals six feet. So that's the scale we're using for this. Now, this is the new information they give us. So think about this new information. If the horizontal length of the zucchini plot shown in the diagram is one and five eighth inches, what is the area of the real vegetable garden in square feet? So if the horizontal length of the zucchini plot, so they're saying this is one and five eighths. So they gave us this missing information. Oh, this is a pretty pen. This is one and five eighths. So think about, think back to when we did irregular figures, your homework, basically you're working it like an irregular figure. So think about, I know this, and I know this. What do I have to do with those two numbers to find the total length here, guys? What am I gonna do with those two numbers? And I'm gonna change these to decimal form because they're easier to work with. So someone could tell me what I'm gonna do with one and five inch, one and five tenths. Well, not multiply. We're gonna multiply later, but not yet. So I don't wanna multiply. How is the smaller side 15 feet and the smaller side two? Well, that's, this is 1.5. This is 1.5. This is 1.5 inches and um, one inch equals six feet. That's the original. Now 12 feet by nine inches, you'll see 12 feet two inches by one and a half inches, 12 by nine. Now be careful because the original question was only the tomato garden. The tomato garden only was one and a half inches, not the whole length of that. So the original amount was two inches by one and a half inches and that was just the tomato garden, Vivi. Okay, you, you get it? Okay, good. So what am I gonna do with one and five tenths inches and one and five eighths inches? What am I gonna do with those? two numbers, not multiply. What operation do I have to do with these two numbers, guys? Don't overthink. How am I gonna find the total length? If I know this and this, what do I have to do with the, them to find the total? Add, thank you. So I wanna make one and five eighths into a decimal. What decimal does five eighths equal? Some of you are good with mental math and quick, quick, quick. I would use a calculator for this, but if you don't wanna use a calculator and you know mental math well, you could do that too. So think five eighths, how am I gonna turn that to a decimal? What would I put in my calculator to change this fraction into a decimal? Well, I see somebody typing it. So it would be five divided by eight, which would be six and 625 thousandths. So this is what you're adding together. So the first step is if we wanna find this total length here, we have to find this total length. So in order to find the area, of the whole garden, we have to find the length of this whole side because we know this is two inches and we've got to figure out, well, then what's the other length here? So if we know this is two inches. So when we add one and five tenths plus one and 625 thousandths, what do we get? What's the total length of that side? 
What do you get when you add those two numbers together? I see someone's typing it. Three and 125 thousandths inches. So that's the longer side of this garden. Okay, now what do we do? What are we gonna do with this information now? Now I don't want, now think about it this way. I don't want the length of my scale drawing. I want the, I should say the area of my real garden, which is 12 feet by nine feet. So what do I have to do here, guys? Any ideas? We do have to multiply. What do we have to multiply? Think about our scale. Think about our scale. What is one inch equal? One inch equals what? It's all based on that scale, good. Yeah, you, we don't have to really worry about the 12 feet and then the nine feet and all that. We literally just have to go back to this here. This is key. Knowing this basically gives us what we know. If we know we have three and 125 inches, 125,000 inches, all we have to do is take that and to find the real length of this garden, we have to multiply this by six. And what do we get? Use your calculators. When we do three and 125,000 times six, how many feet long is this? We know it's three and 125,000 inches long. So it'd be 18 and 7,500 feet, good. So that's the length, the real length of this is 18 and 7,500 feet. This is where it gets complicated. Now, what's the real, so that's the width of this is 18 and 7,500 feet. What's the depth of it? Now this is easy mental math. How deep is this? It's 18 and 75 hundredths by what? That's easy. I take two and I look back to my scale. I do two times what? If I have two inches and we know one inch equals six feet, good. You would do two times six would give you us 12 feet. So to find our total area, you see how these multiple, multiple step problems can be a little trickier. If we wanna find our total area, we just now, since we have the real measurements, we know that the scale drawing is three and 125,000 feet by two, I'm sorry, three and 125,000 inches by two inches. When we multiply three and 125 inches times six, we got 18 and 7,500 feet for the actual width of it. When we multiply two times six feet, we got two inches times six feet, we got 12 feet for the actual depth. When you finally, to find the area, to find out what all this inside here is worth, to find the area, you gotta multiply 18 and 7,500 times, 12 feet, and I think I spoke long enough. One person remembered the correct label, if I'm really being picky, okay, and I'm being a little picky. Um, when you multiply 18 and 75 hundredths times 12, you get 225 square feet or feet squared, because that would be the area. So that's how much area he would have to plant his garden. Any questions on that? And that's a little bit trickier. And that's where you have to think about all you learned in the past about finding irregular shapes or regular figures to find missing links, using your skills to convert things to decimals, using a calculator to help you. And you see the work I showed. So I didn't have to show long multiplication or all the addition in here. But when you're doing these problems on your homework also, this would be like acceptable work even on my little 
guide I had here for the problem. I just typed in a little bit. I just showed the problems that I did and worked it out from there. So if you do that on your homework, with, which most of you do, I'm happy. I just need to see a little bit of work. I want to see it, especially since we're not face-to-face -face right now um, when you're doing your work. I like to see how you're thinking it out so I could see your thought process. Any questions on this one? I do want to show you your homework because I want to go over a couple things on it that I changed and what I want you